In this video, we're going to take a look at adding the next part within our carabiner shuttle pin, which will be the pin grip. And in this step, we're going to do a top-down modeling and put these two parts together as a sub-assembly. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and choose a, making sure that I'm at my top level of the assembly. So you always want to make sure you're at the top level of your file. I'm going to create a new component, and I'm going to name this to be the pin grip. So the pin grip, barrel bottom, pin grip will be their own components. The active component will be the pin grip. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and click create sketch, but I'm going to start off of, which coincidentally is the starting place of where we started on the on the pin itself, but also you can see I can reference the other edges of the pin part as well as I kind of hover around in different areas. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the flat edge on this larger circle, which would also be the plane here. Now with the part, previous part in here, I'm going to go ahead and turn this to like somewhat of an isometric view. And that way we can see what exactly that we're referencing as we go to create our particular part. So I'm going to go ahead and click a circle, choosing the center of the circle, and I'm going to go to the diameter of, so here's the very outside of the pin, and the next circle in is the 0.465, which is the shape that we end up having there. So I'm going to go ahead and click once I have that snap to it, and I'm going to go ahead and dimension this to be 0.465. I'm just going to hit enter with that value because it's already there. I'm going to go ahead and draw another circle based off of that. I'm going to purposely overshoot this because there can be some issues when you try to snap lines and everything. And I'm going to go ahead and dimension this one to the circle that I just created. And I'm going to go ahead and set this dimension in between so you can see what they're going to. They are going to have a separation of 0.05 for the pin grip uh, outside diameter. I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. From here, I'm going to go ahead and now move to... I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a new sketch. I could do an offset plane and choose this, but I do have a small lip edge from where the pin grip will be held on by. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the edge of that, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here a little bit and turn to the side so you can see where that's going to be. Very similar like I did creating a in the previous sketch. I'm going to go ahead and choose a center point circle, choosing the origin, and then I'm going to move outward to the outside edge of the pin. So this is going to create another loft. So the inside edge is going to be at 0.56, which is going to be one of the measurements that we referenced in the previous video. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. So this is where the barrel kind of lofts up and gets a little bit larger. So 0.56 is what we had before. And I'm going to do the exact same thing as I'm going to go ahead and draw another circle dimension making sure to choose the circle, make sure it highlights in blue, make sure you're not clicking on, you see the next available one will do the same thing, which is actually the little bit of raised portion that's on that. 0 0.05, and now I've got two, two sketches with two concentric cir circles each, and now I can go ahead and run the loft command. With the loft command, I wanna make sure I choose, again, here's the issue that can happen, is because we're referencing that pin grip, if you need to, or the um, barrel bottom for the pin grip, if you go ahead and turn off the visibility, I find that makes life a little bit easier. But sometimes you need to have that rose reference points, but you're gonna see it's still gonna pick up those. I'm gonna go ahead and click both of these profiles. And I wanna do the, the inside kind of profile there. So now I'm going to have this pin grip shape. And I'm going to go ahead and say, OK. You're going to notice it's, it will create a solid. And we will come back later to get some of that. So if I turn on, here's the what the pin grip looks like. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at creating the little decorated portions, these little elliptical shapes around the outside edge. So I'm going to go ahead and choose under the construct panel, I'm going to choose tangent plane, and then from here I'm going to choose the face of the grip, So, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Creating a sketch on this new plane, I'm going to go ahead and choose under create, I'm going to choose ellipse, 
and I'm going to go ahead and draw an ellipse shape right now just to get the shape onto the sketch, something close to what we have. Utilizing the horizontal vertical geometric constraint, I'm going to choose the center of the ellipse, choose the origin, so that way they will be aligned, and then I can start using the dimension tool. From the origin to the very edge of our ellipse, this is going to be a 0 0.05 dimension. You may see the ellip ellipse shape may get a little smaller. But what I'm going to do here is on the major axis or between the two longest points, this is going to be a 0.7. And then on the minor axis, which is the two shorter points on our ellipse, we're going to make that a 0.115 measurement. Drag those just a little closer, that way we can see those. And those are the measurements we're going to use. We're fully constrained, so I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. I'm then going to go ahead and extrude. It's going to be a very small cut-in extrusion, so uh, like, like a negative 0 0.05 kind of cut-in. So, and actually there you're going to see, we're starting to see a little bit of our pin. So I'm going to come back down here. We really don't want too much. It's a very small amount. I'm going to go ahead and edit the feature. And we're going to drop this down to probably 0.02. And we're going to say OK. And that's going to give us at least enough of an indentation to be able to see that we've got some texture there. And it's just cutting into our pin grip. Now I'm going to end up choosing under Create, going to Pattern, choosing Circular Pattern. I'm going to change under the Type. I want to make sure I'm choosing Features. And usually what I like to do is I like to select it out of the browser. So I'm going to choose that Extrude icon down there, selecting the Axis. And here I can select what kind of Axis. Let me hide the barrel bottom. And let's see if I can grab, there we go, the green Axis. We need a total of six of these to be patterned around, so I'll type 6 in the quantity, and I will say OK. There will be our pin grip. The last step here is I'm going to go ahead and utilize the shell tool. So shell, and I'm going to shell each end of the pin grip to allow, and I'm going to go ahead and make that 0 .035. So that is the proper shell thickness that we'll have there just a little bit. And even then, you're going to see these like little kind of rubber indentations. So really what I need to do is I need to go back kind of in time. So before I created those indentations. So let me roll back my feature to right before where I had my tangent plane. Now let me shell. Point three five. Go ahead and say OK. Now let me roll my, now my shell features happens before those indentations. And now you'll see, now it's all smooth on the inside like we need there. So here's my pin grip. So there's the sketch for the ellipse, the cutouts, and the circular pattern. Now I can right click on the, on the component name in the browser, change the physical material. Here we are definitely utilizing a rubber. And we'll probably say a rubber silicone. I'll go ahead and grab and drop that on there. So it's gonna give it a white appearance. But if I right click again and choose appearance, I can change the color. So in this video or in this pin that I have, we do not have orange as our paint color. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop red on there. And actually what I'm going to do here to make that orange, I'm going to right click. So up here at the top, if I scroll up to the top of the menu, right click on the red, say duplicate. With the duplicated red that I have, which I'll have a number one in parentheses, I'll right click and say edit. I'm going to change the name over to orange. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag the color slider into the color that I want and grab the crosshair into the kind of color that I think is appropriate. Then I can go ahead and drag and drop my orange color onto the pin grip. Hitting close, I can go ahead and turn on the barrel again. And actually, if I activate the top level of the 
of the file. Here is our pin grip with the barrel bottom. This would be the first subassembly. And for students, this would be one student's work. Before we move on, let's go ahead and drop a as-built joint. And you're going to select the two components, selecting the pin grip and selecting the barrel bottom. We're going to choose a rigid type, so if you run the animation, those will stay into place. And I'll say OK. So now, if I right-click on the barrel bottom and choose the ground, I cannot move any of these components So within this file. And that is exactly how they would need to be assembled. So or that's the desired motion we would want to have, is you're not able to move the pin grip from the away from the barrel bottom. So this video completes the first subassembly with our carabiner shuttle pin, and we just had completed a top-down example of modeling these two components together. Check out other videos as I move on to the other subassemblies and other parts, and look at doing some of the uh, assembly later of the entire pin.